teacher, businesswoman, philanthropist. Her life has taken her from Chicago's heartland to the corporate boardroom and to luxury hotels. Her name is Sheila Johnson. The History Makers, the nation's largest African-American video oral history archive is proud to present An Evening with Sheila Johnson. And now to our host, veteran PBS TV journalist, Miss Gwen Ifill. Good evening. I'm pleased to be back here again tonight. Let me tell you about the story we're gonna hear tonight. From philanthropist to entertainer to sports mogul, she has made her mark. Let's listen, Sheila Johnson. I promised Sheila I would give her what I gave Barry Gordy, which is to say just a chance to chat and to tell us about her life, which has, I have to say, I want to be her when I grow up. And someone told me I was already grown up, so I'd miss my moment. But I want to start by talking about your roots. Absolutely. The, the basics. Where did you come from? Well, I was born in McKeesport, Pennsylvania, moved around this entire great country 14 times, and finally settled right here outside of Chicago in Maywood, Illinois. But grew up with two incredible parents. My father was a neurosurgeon, my mother was an accountant, and they gave me the best possible life. They weren't just incredible, they were extraordinary for African Americans in their time. Absolutely. I mean, my father really had battles. I mean, in a sense, he still had to struggle as a doctor. There were only 11 neurosurgeons in the country at that time and could not practice in white hospitals. And so that's why I had to move all over the place. I find that people like to tell the stories of incredibly high achieving African Americans by talking about our bootstrap stories, how we came from nothing. But in fact, yours is a slightly different story. You came from a solidly middle-class upbringing. Daddy a doctor is pretty much as up middle-class yes. or upper-class as it gets. Let's take a look at that. Born to a neurosurgeon father and an accountant mother, Sheila Johnson grew up in Maywood, Illinois, where she began to play the violin at age eight. At Proviso High School, education violin and cheerleading became her passions, earning her a music scholarship to the University of Illinois. It was 1966, the height of the civil rights movement. College campuses were rocked by protests and unrest. But Sheila's deep commitment to classical music would only grow stronger. Now, music was a huge part of your life. Talk about how it wove itself in, even until today. It was your father who you first saw playing the piano. Oh, yes. He would come home from operations, and you know, like a lot of people after a stressful day, they hit the bar. My father hit the piano keys, and he would sit down and just play Chopin. He would, he would play everything on the piano. He's just a very gifted, gifted musician. Is, is it true that you actually witnessed him playing with blood on his white yes, coat? Yes, he would have little spots of blood after, and I would say, Daddy, at least you could change. You think? Yeah. <laughs> but he would drag me to the hospital. He really wanted me to be a doctor more than anything in the what world. What happened? There was just no way. <laughs> <There's> no way. <laughs> but let's start by talking about your upbringing, which I guess the best word for it is 
peripatetic. I love that word, and I think it absolutely applies. I'm a preacher's kid. We moved around a lot. Mm -hmm. You moved around more. Because we had to. I mean, my father um, could not stay in one hospital more than 10 months because they kept transferring him because he was with the VA hospital. So we moved all over the East Coast, a little bit to the Midwest, and then finally settled here because he just put his foot down. He said, look, I can't move anymore. I've got to get my family established. So we moved to Maywood, Illinois. But during that time, even with all of the racial unrest, I was able to cross racial lines, and I think it helped me build a resilience.